a tipping point, a fork in the road, the likes of which humanity and the planet that we're living on have never seen before. Can you feel it? What started out as whispers, blinking signs that something was wrong, are now thunderclaps pumped out in the bombastic effects of climate change, catastrophic habitat destruction, and the spoils of overconsumption. There is no planet B. But don't worry, I'm not here to overwhelm you and talk to you about how nature is ripping apart at the seams. You already know that. I'm here to do something else. I'm here to give you powerful tools. Tools to help you to communicate sustainability as if your life depended on it, because it does. I'm here to disrupt your status quo of how you speak in front of audiences, because nine times out of 10, what I see is broken, inert, and ineffective. But there is another way. Another way, another road less traveled, where the messages that you give don't leak out of the room two seconds after you say them. Where your messages and the words you speak linger and marinate in the hearts and minds of your audiences. Where you plant seeds of change so that every speech that you make helps to make the world a better place, one speech at a time. You have options. And here they are. Option number one, tension is the enemy of connection. Let me break this down for you. I like to say that what your body does, your presence does. What your body does, your voice does. What your body does, your mind does. So the moment that you find yourself in physical lockdown, where something is closed, one body touch, part is touching another body part, and you look something like this, you're disassociated from yourself, you're disassociated from the audience. We can't reach you. You're not accessible here. Know and learn that in the body language of leadership speaking, open is better than closed. Because when your body's open, remember what your body does, your presence does, your presence is open. You're saying, I'm here, I'm ready to connect, let's work together, let's do this. When your body's open, your voice opens too, and you free it so that you unleash the potential of how you speak. When your body's open, so is your mind. Imagine, imagine the connections that happen as a result of just that one change. Tension is the enemy of connection. Another way to think about this is to think about the idea of a little more than presence, a little more of the body language. Let's talk about the fact that public speaking is a speaking skill that is a performing art, like theater, dance, and music, that might make some of you get triggered. Because it's not about acting. No, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about speaking as a performance art. And I challenge you, think of one dancer, actor, or musician who does not warm up their body, their instrument, before they go on stage. Can you think of anybody? Probably not. Now the challenge is, think of a speaker who doesn't warm up. Is that speaker you? Yes, I see some heads nodding. My invitation to you is to get out of amateur hour and to get into professionalizing, how you prepare your body before you speak. We can't just roll out of our world and roll onto stage and connect with people. That takes effort and work to prepare the instrument. Your body, your voice. Tension is the enemy of connection. Vanquish tension. Another option you have is this. Paint the picture, not just the frame. What do I mean by that? I mean that in the average talk about sustainability and communicating it, I see you painting frames, the facts, the details, the charts, the figures. Does that make anybody excited? <laughs> yes. But I don't go to art galleries to look at frames, do you? I go to art galleries to look at the picture because it's the picture that makes me feel something. And this is what's fundamentally missing from the average communication about sustainability. Now, Maya Angelou, my superhero, I worship her, 
intellectual poet, she said, and I quote, people don't remember what you say. They don't remember what you did. They remember how you make them feel. Ladies and gentlemen, the feeling is in the painting. Imbue it with rich colors, details, or greedy for it. We're starved for the picture that you're going to create with your words. And don't forget that human beings are sensual creatures. Yes, we've got five senses that we use to live and survive and thrive in the world. Sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. The more you can use the senses to describe your picture, whatever you're talking about, what does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? You get the idea. The more you can do this, the more you're painting the picture and we're feeling it. It's touching us. And when we feel something, we might just do something. Paint the picture, not just the frame. One more option that you have is this. Lead with love. Yes. RuPaul, my favorite drag queen, says it best. He said, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? And then he says, can I get an amen? But you don't have to say that. <laughs> Now, he said this, and it's so precise, so simple, yet so transformational. When you're not in love with yourself, when you're, you're not obsessed with how much you love yourself. And I'm not talking about vanity. I'm talking about I love myself, so I have the courage to show myself, to dare to be remarkable so that you really see me, because when you really see me, you connect with me. And if you don't see me, if I'm blocking, if I'm buffering, if I'm fronting, as they say in New York, I can't see you. And that diminishes the connection. It makes it dissolve and go away. Love for yourself. Love for your topic. Yes. Aristotle got it right when he talked to us, to the world, about the three things that good speakers need in order to be effective. He said that speakers need high ethos. Ethos means character in Greek. And this refers to your trustworthiness, your credibility. We need to know that we can trust you. The other element that Aristotle gave us was logos. This is word in Greek. And this, of course, is all about your content, what you're saying. Does it make sense? Can I follow you? Is there good structure? But the star of this triad, and my favorite word in the human language, is pathos. Yes, pathos. This powerful word has two sides. On the one hand, pathos means suffering. On the other hand, it means passion. Ooh, the power, you feel it. It's electric. What a word. For our purposes, pathos is about you revealing your emotional connection to your audience. Yes, not holding it back. Not sleeping and being small. Opening. Connecting. When you pour your pathos into us, we can feel what you're talking about. When we feel what you're talking about, guess what happens? We might just be activated to do something, or to think differently, or to make different choices. Communicating sustainability. What's love got to do with it? Everything. The love that you give in the time that you take to release tension from your body, because tension is the enemy of connection. Ten minutes of warming up in a hallway somewhere does the trick. Love for you painting that picture, imbuing it with crimson, yellow, green, colors, details of the senses. Love. Love in you leading with love for yourself, because when we really see you, we connect with you. Love for your topic. Because as I said earlier, when you are pouring pathos into us, we are feeling those effects and we're better people because of it. But you know what? To wrap up this idea, there's really only one thing to say. The word presentation has the word present in it, as in gift. And you and I both know that the best gifts are prepared over time with care and attention to detail. And they are given with a full heart of love. Mm -hmm.